sorts. All right, Zach, I got a little game for us. I got to type some statements up, took some statements from Twitter, um, from the Twitter people out there. And it's like Ohio State, you know, fact or cap, true or false. I'm going to read you a statement. And you tell me if it's true or false and why or why not. Fact or cap, I like yeah. it. Yeah, number one, Tommy Eichenberg has been the most impressive player on Ohio State's roster this year. Fact. Fact. Ooh. Absolute fact. He's been a pleasant surprise. And I had heard great things in training camp. We obviously, you know, from the inside, I, I heard great things in interviews in training camp, and he has fit the bill. I mean, I that being said, I don't think he's gone against a dynamic offense yet, but mm -hmm. he has been outstanding. I mean, just the way he plays the position, how aggressive he is to the ball, like just outstanding. And is Mike Hall a close second for you? Or you Mike Hall's a close second for me, yeah. That's absolutely fair. Statement number two, Ohio State's wide receiver room is not as deep as advertised. I don't know who advertised that it was deep. I've said for fucking nine months that it is not deep. It's three receivers, and then, you know, unless Cam Babb is 100% healthy, I, it's 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 a three-player room, and they're they're leaving a lot to desire right now. So, I, yeah, I guess if, if Buckeye beat told you that it was deep, it's absolutely falsely advertised. So that is cap. It is not a deep room. Cam Brown is the top corner in the Big Ten. Ooh. Ooh, I'd have to really study that. But, but I mean, he's right there if he's not. Pretty, I mean, pretty close. He's definitely been the top corner for Ohio State. And I think after last week, that's really not up yeah. for any kind of debate. Yeah, so I, I would say that is fact. I, I really want to look at the, the conference, though. I might be forgetting right. about somebody. But, yeah, I'd say Cam Brown's the best corner in the Big Ten. That is fact. Okay, well, we'll, we'll start this. Cam Brown is better than Porter. Fact. Okay. Facts, <laughs> as they say. F-A-X, facts. <laughs> That's all I need. All right. The defensive line for Ohio State is rotating too many players. I don't think so. I really don't. I mean, I think they could play. They, they might. I don't want to put any players out there that shouldn't be playing. But I think there's, there's one or two players that don't need to see the field mm -hmm. right now. But to say that Caden Curry doesn't belong in the rotation, I mean, that kid, that kid looks like he's going to be a star. And he might be an impact player this year. I know they're loaded at DN, but I'd rather see Caden Curry on the field than Zach Harrison just from what I see on film. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, so I don't think they're rotating too many guys. Maybe one or two are, are playing that maybe shouldn't be. But to act like they shouldn't be playing those top eight guys, is that's asinine. They absolutely should. Okay. Um, the last five years, the room that's been coached the best is the running backs at Ohio State. The last five years? Yeah. Last five oh, years combined. I mean, on both sides of the ball, defensive line, mm -hmm. I think, is one. Running back is – probably two and the quarterbacks are coached really well like if you're just talking about how well they're coached just because just because uh cj stroud doesn't scramble because he doesn't have the, the the heart or desire doesn't mean they're not well coached i mean there's you know on the film breakdown we watched i think he missed two reads two he made two poor decisions in the entire game he threw a, a, a rpo swing screen on what would have been a touchdown because notre dame was misaligned and they had numbers in the run game and then he um, he missed a one-on-one -on -one in man coverage. Marvin Harrison Jr. cooked the corner, and he he ended up playing the wrong side. So I mean that's pretty good for for an entire game. Forty-eight minute cut up is or an hour long cut up that 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 video is on Patreon, and only two plays. I said, wow, he really missed this one. That's pretty fucking good for a quarterback in game one. So you have the quarterback as the as the best coach coach room, or do you no? Think I think D line, and then okay. there's an argument between quarterback and running back. Got you. My, I guess my point on the running back side of it, Zach, is that if you look at the last five years, that's the room that hasn't had any flinching in them at all. Oh, like no, they, Tony Alford's done such... an amazing job in recruiting, development, coaching. I mean, he's – I've said it before. Tony Alford should be a head coach. He should have already been a head coach. And mm -hmm. the fact that he's not is criminal. I mean, he's a phenomenal football coach. C.J. Stroud is a championship-level quarterback right now. Fact or cap? Cap. Cap. What is it? He, Toughness, progressions, running? Yeah, he's just, you you have to be a baller, a playmaker mm -hmm. to win a national championship. And he has shown me that he is a, a generational arm talent. That's what he is. He's no one, no one would say he's a baller. Like he goes against a, a, a formidable opponent, right, in the big game, and he doesn't put on a show. And that's what you have to be to win it all, right? Even Stetson Bennett, who is far less talented than C.J. Stroud, when he played against Alabama, when he played against Oregon, when he played against a formidable opponent, he put on a show. He might not have the arm talent to make all the throws, but he showed the fuck up. He had that elevation experience, right? He took his game and everyone around him to another level. That is what C.J. has lacked thus far. So I don't think he's a championship-caliber quarterback yet. 
I think he could be. And if he becomes one, he might be ridiculous because he's one of the most talented throwers I've ever seen. G. Scott and Joe Royer won't have a role in the offense this year. Factor cap. 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 I, for them not to have a role, you'd have to tell me that you have three first-round receivers, and I don't see three first-round receivers on film. Um, not to say that they won't become first-round receivers at some point, but I think one injury to a receiver, or even when all three are out there, I think you you need to get in some two tight end sets, and those kids are too talented. Joe Royer, from all reports that I've gotten from inside the Woody, is he was going to be a Brock Bowers, like baby Brock, we'll call him. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Love that. Kevin Wilson did tell me he's he's better than Jeremy Rucker, and I know coaches get excited about some things. Um, all right, final factor cap for Ohio State. Ohio State will finish this year with a top five linebacker unit in all of college football. Who? I mean, the, the way it, the way it's trending, I'll say fact. I mean, I think they might be fifth, but I mean, I think I think these kids are playing out of their mind. I, I'd like to see Cody Simon play a little bit better, but Steel Chambers and and Tommy Eichenberg are playing as good as anybody. I mean, I think I think you have two legitimate linebackers right there, and then they just need to you know, work in a third and fourth. And if they do by mid season, end of the year, I think they could have a top five linebacking core, which is insane to think about because they were the worst linebackers in the country last year, which uh, just a testament to Jim Knowles. That was this episode of factor cap comment. Other teams or other topics you'd want us to do factor cap on in future episodes. And I will uh, note them down. And obviously you guys can send me stuff for that. That's one of the things I want to get menace army involved with to help you get topics per weekly, like more stuff like that, rather than just mailbag stuff on Fridays. Zach, I want to hit a couple super chats, and then we have our, my favorite segment of the show, and that is the uh, translating coach and the gang spoke yesterday. A um, couple uh, super chats, though, real quick. Easy I 2 can Maryland win the Big Ten East this year? Um, I think Maryland's the best offense in, in the Big Ten, maybe second to Ohio State. So <clears throat> there's certainly a possibility. I mean, the, the problem, if they were in the West, they would be a shoe-in landslide to, to make it to Indianapolis. I just don't think they have the dudes to mm-hmm. beat Ohio State and Michigan. I just don't see that happening. I think they have skill at the on the perimeter. I think their wide receiver group might be the best in the Big Ten. I like Tualia. I don't think he's as good as CJ. I don't think he's as good as JJ. But they're the third team. They're the only other team in contention. It goes Ohio State 1, Michigan 2, Maryland three in the East. That's just, that's, that's the pecking order right now. 